All right, buddy. We are officially live. It's Mike Wall back with another episode of the Agent Revolution podcast, the place where we deconstruct the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agents so that they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. Today, I'm joined by my friend, Florida Mega Agent and team leader, Mitch Rebeck. And we're going to give you some actionable strategies to help you stay productive during the pandemic. Keep in mind also, guys, this episode is available just like all the other ones and transcribed over at theagentfactory.com. Hey, Mitch, man, you ready to rock and roll? I'm always ready. I was born ready. What's up, buddy? What's up, man? So this is the second time I've had you on, and I'm really excited about this because um, I know you've been in the business for a while, and you've been in the ups and been in the downs, and um, I know you've taken your bumps and bruises and, and certainly can add some value today, man. Sure. Well, you know, it's all about adapting. If you're a business person, you look at the business, you say, all right, this is what's happening now. How do I adapt? How do I change to, you know, how I use an EXP term, how do I be more agile, right? Yeah. To build, adjust to the market. And, and it's amazing right now. I'm talking to so many agents that are sitting on their hands saying, well, I'm just going to wait till this passes before I do anything. I'm like, really? What are you crazy? You know? So uh, that's, you know, it's just about, if you're in business, you, you do whatever it takes to survive, right? Yep, that's exactly right. And, and so real quick, man, just uh, give everybody a, uh, um, a quick bio on you. Tell everybody uh, where you're at um, and, and how your business is structured. Sure. So I um, had my own brokerage for a gazillion years uh, and realized being a broker, how do I say this nicely, sucks. Uh, and um, Broker, right? Broker. Broker. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, everybody thinks you make a lot of money as a broker. I was with a, a group up in New Jersey, and I won't mention their name because they haven't joined us yet. But um, 350 agents, seven offices, netted 105000 actually $104,000 last year. Oh, my gosh. That's brutal, man. That's a big headache to put up with for hundred grand. I had 120 agents with my brokerage, and I averaged between neg negative $50,000 a year and $100,000 profit. Yeah, it's not worth. It's just not worth it. So we merged over the EXP in uh, 2017, June of 2017, with 40 agents. I got rid of most of my slackers at that point, and um, now we have 535 agents in 27 states. Holy cow, man, that's awesome! And you are in the Melbourne area. Yeah, Melbourne, Cocoa Beach, exactly. Okay. And how long have you been down there? Because you're a Boston guy, if I remember correctly, aren't you? I still pack my car. Yes. Um, Yes, I've been down in Florida for, it'll be 21 years in July. I've been in real estate for 19. Okay. And I guess I don't have to ask you why you left because I'm in Ohio and I know why I want to be in Florida. Yeah, I actually <laughs> left. I owned a, uh, I was the first online dating service and it was under contract to sell. And part of the deal was I had to lower my expenses. So I was doing a radio show out of Universal Studios, Ask Mitch the Date Doctor. So if you guys need dating advice, I'm good at that. And, um, uh, and I actually called my friend and said, what's the office space like in Cocoa Beach? And she said, 12 bucks a foot. And I was uh, 38 years old and single. Went over to Cocoa Beach to look at the office space, looking at girls in bikinis as a single 38-year-old guy. And uh, called my partner and said, moving to Florida. And then, uh, and then I married my friend that showed me how to show me the space. <laughs> oh, that is too cool, man. Yeah, yeah so pretty cool stuff. <laughs> With a good buddy of mine, um, uh, Nick Good, out of the, the Dallas, Texas area. And, and really what I'm trying to do right now is just put out a bunch of uh, actionable content uh, to help people who, you know, maybe don't know what to do or searching for something to do. Uh, and, you know, with your experience having gone through, I know you were in the market during the, the 2008 crash. And uh, I, I know you've been part of the uh, 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 ebbs and flows of, you know, different marketplaces. And I, I know you've, again, like I said, you've taken your bumps and bruises, but most importantly, you're still around and, um, and yeah. you're still around for a reason, man. And, and I think you can add a lot of value to our audience. So um, we were talking a little bit before we went live here and you had mentioned that, um, you know, you're still out showing houses, um, real estate agents in most states, not all uh, have been deemed as essential. So, I don't want to say it's business as usual, but in, in a lot of in a lot of respects, it is. I mean, we still have to go out and make a living and we have an opportunity to do that. So how specifically in the Melbourne, Florida area, what is the current situation right now? OK, so, I mean, our market is still pretty good. Um, you know, 
as we talked about a little bit earlier, it's slowed down. We're seeing a little bit of a slowdown right now, but not much. Um, things that are priced correctly are still selling pretty quickly. Uh, the uh, I just did a contract yesterday, a multiple offer. Uh, one of my agents called me earlier. There's a multiple offer with five offers, uh, one of her listings. Uh, but what I'm finding is people are kind of using this as a good excuse, and I hope this doesn't come out wrong, yeah. to not do anything. I know. I know. You know, it's like, all right, well, I, I talked to one of my agents this morning, a great guy, and he's normally an icon agent, and he's blaming this on not hitting the icon status. Mm. And I said, well, why are you blaming that? Well, I can't work now. I go, I don't sell homes, and I've sold three homes in the past 10 days, and I don't even sell houses. Yeah. Um, full time. I mean, I, do, I work like 200 hours a year doing it. And he's like, yeah, but, you know, I can't go out. I go, well, why not? I go, I have masks, lots of masks. Right? <laughs> I have sanitizer. I have I have everything I need. I have gloves. Right. right. So, you know, so what I'm learning, and I've known this about realtors for years. It's one of the things that drives me crazy. I love realtors. They're some of the nicest people, most community-oriented people I've ever met in my life. But they're not business people, a lot of them. And as a business person, you adapt, right? Things change. And you say, how do I adapt to this situation? For instance, in 2006 and seven, when the market crashed here, instead of crying, I stopped taking listings. Yeah. Maybe I was going to go broke, but we grew 20% a year during that time period because we changed our business model. It's the same thing right now. Right. You know, you're doing more like one of my girls, hey, girls, it's not appropriate anymore. I'm sorry. Uh, one of my agents, uh, she's a lovely lady. Um, yeah. she, uh, she did a virtual open house the other day and doubled into her listing. Man, that's right? great. Yeah. So this thing, but here's what here's what happens. This is what I believe at least. Is either most people don't have the right person to talk to about what to do. Mm -hmm. This is no offense to anybody, but not everybody is a I might say I'm a leader, but not everybody's a leader and not everybody's an educator, and not everybody knows how to adapt. And if you don't have somebody like that in your life, you're gonna struggle. Right. So what I'm gonna tell you today is what I told one of my agents before I tell you what she did and what I had her do, I'm going to tell you her results. Mm -hmm. I, on Monday, she implemented, which is by the way, the key word to success, implement, mm -hmm. right? Yep. She implemented what I taught her the week before. And since last Monday, she's written two buyer contracts and showing two other buyers and got four listings. Wow. In, in a market that my other agents say, well, we can't work right yeah. now. So the beauty of the beauty of this market, if you're listening to this show right now, is most people aren't going to do anything. Yeah. That's an incredible opportunity for those of us that do. Yeah, that's a great point, man. And that, that's what I I was talking to Nick about this on on Monday. It's like this actually is a huge opportunity. And I, I don't I don't mean to come off insensitive or anything. I mean, people still have to work. But the, the bad part about situations like this is you can use that as an excuse if you want to, right? You can always find an excuse not to work, but, and, and people are doing that in, in low scale right now, but what that provides for the people who are willing to work and work um, cautiously, right? Because right. you can do that, right? You have masks, you have hand sanitizer is like you said, it's a huge opportunity to go out and take market share because there are people that still want to look at houses. There are people that need a place to live right now. And 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 so Nick told me the, the, the other day is that a, a large percentage of agents in their marketplace aren't even returning phone calls. It, it's insane. No, it's it's uh, but it's all a mindset. Right. So uh, here's here's one of the flaws in our business. The flaw in our business is so easy to be, become a realtor. You know, you have no real investment, maybe fifteen hundred bucks, maybe two hundred two grand. Yeah, I always tell realtors, you know, ninety nine percent of life is mindset. I don't care what you do. If you have the wrong mindset, you uh, Henry Ford says it best. If you think you can or think you can't, you're right. Yeah, it's my favorite line ever. But I tell people when you're thinking about your real estate business, think about it like you invested two hundred fifty thousand dollars to start your real estate business, mm -hmm. right? If I invest two hundred fifty thousand dollars to to do any business, I'm going to be desperate. Now, I may not be desperate, but I'm going to mentally be desperate to accomplish whatever I need to accomplish to be successful. Yeah. And that's not just, just right now. That's just in our business in general. 86% of realtors fail in the first 18 months. Mm -hmm. And it's because they, they either they picked the wrong brokerage, uh, didn't have a right mentor, or didn't have a right leader. Yeah. Didn't have a right educator. 
So being successful in this business is a joke. Honestly, it's a joke. You, anybody can do this business. Yeah. I've, I've, I've proven that with so many different agents that I've coached that some of them I did actually just to see if I could actually make that person successful. Cause yeah. I, it did, cause I didn't think I could, but, um, and, but I, I mean, if you want, well, we can talk about just a couple of things you could be doing right now. Yeah, please to do this. First of all, every I've taught this program to a billion realtors, and I only know two that actually implemented. It wasn't really a billion, but it was a lot. And right now, the and, and the excuse is always I don't have enough time. Right now, you have time. So make a list of every person that you know. Right. And, and, and every person that's family and friend, everybody's an acquaintance, everybody's a past customer. All of your past customers right now, pick up the phone and call them. Yeah. And this is like rocket science here. Pick up the phone and call them. And here's your, here's your script. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Is everything okay? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And, and they're going to say, because everybody says, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. How you doing? How's the real estate market? You guys doing okay? Because yeah. they want to make sure we're okay. I'm like, yeah, market's doing good. I go, we're still selling. He goes, you know, I've been actually, my wife and I were just talking about selling. We need to talk. Yeah. Or my brother was thinking about buying. He's down here looking for a house now. Yeah. It, it's amazing. Uh, another girl, three months in the business, right, with me. This is all she's doing. She doesn't have that, right? So she's just reaching out to friends. Mm -hmm. Hey, how you doing? Doing Okay. Yeah, I know you just got your license. How you doing? Doing great. But you know, my friend Bill wants to sell. In the past two weeks, he's gotten three listings. Yeah. You know, and, so, and to your point, Mitch, yeah. I, I did a video on this. I don't know. The easy thing to do is is to call Sphere, right? I mean, those those are warm conversations. But right, what the difference between calling your Sphere and calling Internet leads? is one thing, it's rapport, right? You already have rapport with your SOI. You right. don't have rapport with internet leads. So what you have to do with internet leads then that's different when, with SOI is build rapport. And it's so easy to build rapport right now because rapport comes from one thing, finding commonalities. And what do we all have in common right now, right? We're all in quarantine. We're all, we're all going through this coronavirus pandemic. And so, I mean, that's an easy icebreaker, wouldn't you say? It's it's so easy. You know, when I talk about internet leads, even with or without this time, I talk about 10% real estate and 90% lifestyle. Yeah. I don't know about them. It's the same thing. You know, hey, Bill, I know we haven't met yet, but I just want to check in on you. It's a tough time right now. I just want to make sure you guys are doing okay. Yeah. That's yeah. it. It's the same conversation. And if you try to sell them something right now, you're a moron. <laughs> right, because this is not the time to be selling them something. But let them let them ask you to sell them something. Yeah. Now it'd be different in a normal market. I'm always asking for the sale. Yeah. This is the normal world right now. So if you just do that, but you have to make a list. And here's the other thing I, I had this other girl do. Um, I had to make a list of all her friends, family. And when I say friends and family, I mean real friends, people that will drive two hours to pick you up because your car broke down. Mm -hmm. And everybody else is an acquaintance, right? And put them into a into a spreadsheet. I use MailChimp for this because uh, it's a great program for free. And you just send them an email and just, hey, just checking in on you, making sure you're doing okay. How you holding up? Yeah. That's it. You know, so if you don't want to pick up the phone, because I know a lot of people are afraid of those things because they're really scary, um, do an email to everybody you know, every acquaintance you know. Now, during a normal market, there's a whole other way to use this. But right now, it's all about compassion. It's all about um, it's all about making sure people are okay. Yeah. And the number one thing that we hear when we say that, thank you so much for calling. I really appreciate you reaching out. Yeah. Yeah. It, you're, you're exactly right. And what, so what I'm hearing you say is basically that this is, um, while, while the coronavirus pandemic is, um, you know, awful in and of itself, it has created opportunities for you to reconnect with people. It's created a reason for you to put yourself in front of people. And by doing that, you're creating opportunities to have conversations about helping people buy and sell. Rocket science. Right? Right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just not that hard. And the thing is, you know, you have to be genuine. You know, I, I'm, you know, and, and Mike, you know me pretty well. I'm just as, what you see is what you get, right? I'm just, sure. I just, I care about helping people. That's why I don't even charge for coaching anymore. It's just, I just want to help people. And yeah. 
And if you call your customer and they feel like there's an ulterior motive for the phone call, you're in trouble. You're not going to get anything. But I've been reaching out to a few of my, my customers just to check on. And I don't call a lot of them because I just, I just don't want to sell that many more homes um, yeah. personally. But, you know, I, I have some customers I really care about. Every single one was, thank you so much for reaching out. Every single one. Yeah. You know, uh, people are dying to talk to people right now and have some sort of communication, some, yeah. some sort of warm feeling thing. Because everybody's, you know, especially if you have customers that are single, I mean, they're living by themselves or, you know, older, older man or woman or even anybody single, they're just stuck there by themselves. This is, this is our life right now. This is our social life. My wife and I are doing, we do on uh, a couple nights a week, we do uh, Zoom happy hours now with people. Yeah. Right? So do a Zoom happy hour with, with your customer. Yeah, man. It's a great idea. Yeah. And so just connect because those people are going to remember you. Right. Because you know who's doing, who's not doing this? 95% of the realtors out there. Yeah, yeah. And, and and here's the great thing about it is like I think the difference between people that um that really get this, they understand that you don't call with the expectation of getting business, right? You don't call like you you call you mentioned calling with with uh with authenticity, right? Or being genuine. And that's when the business just happens to show up, right? It's not you're not call, if you're calling to get something, you're calling for the wrong reason. Like the, the mindset is that you're calling to offer up, um, you're calling to offer up a genuine opportunity to talk to somebody, a genuine opportunity for somebody to talk back to you, and providing them the platform to hey, if they want to have a conversation about real estate, I'm I'm definitely open to talking about that, but I'm more interested in talking to you because now I have an op. And, and, and listen, anybody who's listening to this. If you're not tapping into your sphere, you know, shame on you anyway. But if you already are tapping into your sphere, this is just another opportunity for you to tap into your sphere and and put those, you know, you're putting those, you're just putting that money in the bank, right? And you're you're you're, you're cashing those relationships in later down the road because not only are you giving them the opportunity to talk to you about real estate, but guess what? By you calling them and being genuine or authentic with them, who are if if somebody's talking about real estate in their small circle right now? Whose name are they going to mention? Right? Of course, of course. You know, and that's the whole thing with you know the reason why I'm telling people to make a list is because when you make a list, it's in front of you, and you'll actually do better actually implementing. Um, this is the easiest time there's ever been in the history of real estate to make a phone call. You know, and I, I don't know if you know I have a book out, and I won't tell the whole book. My, my new book I released a few months ago. Uh, it's called uh, a rockstar sales guy. Don't do chicken shit marketing. Yeah. Um, and, and the reason why I wrote it, cause I wanted to simplify things. And by the way, you don't have to buy it. It's a buck on Amazon. You don't have to buy it. Well, hey, it make sure you put a link to the book in the, in the comments. Oh, I don't, I don't even care. You don't have to buy it. I'm going to tell everybody what's in the book right now. The right. whole book It's three pages. <laughs> so the first page says don't text. Second page says don't email. And I'm not going to say it the way I say it in the book. The third page says pick up the friggin' phone. Yeah. And I use a, a, a different expletive than friggin'. Um, and the point is we've gotten so far away from actual human conversation because everybody's telling you as realtors, you know, you don't ever – I was talking to – and I won't mention the program because I don't like to bash programs. But I was talking to a realtor this morning. They were asking my advice about a program. I go, they're selling you on the fact that they're telling you you never have to call this this customer and you're going to get sales. So, yes, out of three or 400 leads, you're going to get a sale. That's no question. But how many? How much effort is involved in that? You know, if you're not calling people, you're not building relationships. I train my agents that on their Internet leads. I go, look, how long does it take to say I need a three-bedroom, two-bath house for $300,000 in Cocoa Beach? Right? Six yeah. seconds. How long does it take to build a relationship? Every agent's goal, it seems, is to get off of the phone. Yeah. Right? My goal when I was, when I was selling 80, 80 homes a year was to be on there as long as I could. Mm -hmm. If I could be on the phone for a half hour with every lead, ah, oh, that was a winner. Right. And there's a reason why I sold 80 homes a year was just being an assistant. It's because I built relationships. The, today, this what is I haven't sold full-time since 2005. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, I still sell 30 or 40 homes a year. I do zero prospecting. I don't call anybody. Right. I, I give away at least 40 to 50 deals every year to my agents and people that call me. And it's not because I'm anything special. 
It's just because I made my customers feel special. Yeah. yeah. All this is about it's build a relationship. You know, so little Billy plays baseball. Great. When's his next game? Tuesday. Great. Call on Wednesday. How did Billy do last night? Yeah. That's right. what that's what wins the hearts of customers. Sure. You know, I've been in business myself for 40 years, and the messaging has been the same with every business I've owned, 22 different companies. And the messaging is the same on every single well, good. I was gonna walk by in a second. Um you, you can walk by, Greg. <laughs> Sorry. Uh we um about she used to, used to be being on my head so she she could actually talk. Perfect. Hey man, we've had dogs barking, we have dogs come up and lick the cameras, we've had lawn right. in the background, we've had it all, brother. Well, honey, don't my wife's gonna walk by and lick the camera real quick. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've never had a wife lick the camera, so that would be <laughs> That's just kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> she's like, that's weird, bitch. Anyways, um, so this is all about, I say right now, it's compassion. There's a lot of really scared people out there. Yeah. And if you can go there with, I, I wrote a, a piece on Facebook earlier. Um, so I've had a lot, of, a lot of people reach out to me about becoming a realtor, mm -hmm. which, you know, I get those all the time anyways, but I've had a, a lot more recently. Because they're kind of freaked out about how lack of control they have over the job they just got laid off from. Yeah. And I said, you've got to be an entrepreneur with a servant's heart. And I think I really believe the only reason why I'm successful, well, probably because I'm funny, but is because I, I I truly have a servant's heart. Yeah. I will go out of my way to help anybody be successful, whether it be in real estate, whether it be buying or selling a house, whether it be rubbing your dog's belly, I don't know. Um, but it's all about if you go with that mindset and, 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 and really from the heart, this is the easiest thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. And it's interesting. You, you take the same approach with your agents or with your clients, right? You take the exact same approach with your clients. So your agents are your clients in some respect, right? I take the same approach with everybody. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, so the more you can, you know, it's one of the things I say to people all the time. What can I do to help? Yeah. And I truly feel that way. What can I do to help? Because if you do that, people people see through crap and they see through honesty, right? Yeah. Back to authentic, being authentic is if you're if you're reaching out to your customers and, and you're if you have a team of agents and reach out to your agents, you should be calling your agents right now, especially. Uh, we're doing a, a happy hour on Tuesday night with all of our agents on Zoom, um, all of our local agents here. Um, you know, do whatever it takes to. To be involved with them right now because they're all freaking out. Right. It's like a lot of you guys that are listening to this are freaking out right now. You don't need to freak out. If you do what I'm telling you to do, you're going to build your business. And if nothing else, when this changes in the next, I hope, 45 to 60 days max, right. you're, going to be, you're going to be hitting the wall running. What are those people, those other 95% that weren't going to do anything? What are they going to get? Yeah. They're, not, they're going to be starting their business all. Yeah. God, that's such a great point, man. That is such a good point. Um, and again, there's no excuse for not being able to make phone calls right now. I, even if you're quarantined in your house, you can still pick up the phone and you're not going to transmit the coronavirus. I mean, there's no excuse. And the, what Mitch just said essentially is that if you're not, if, even if you're not showing houses, you should be making phone calls because if you're not making phone calls, um, you're, you, whenever this is over, you will start from zero. You literally will start from zero and you'll have to, you're, the people who are making phone calls right now are getting ahead of you. Uh, they're building a pipeline. And what's going to happen with those people is their businesses are just going to take off. The trajectory for those people are, are looking really strong and good right now. But for those of you who are, are, are not active, um, inactivity will have a consequence. You may be getting paychecks from done it's all over literally be six or, or it could literally be 60 days before you get another paycheck when this is over yeah yeah it's, right? it's pretty yeah it's pretty much you know i i always say that uh if you have a closing today you're unemployed now if you have no more clothes you're not unemployed so i've had several of my agents call me say how do i apply for unemployment wow. i go i go you're applying so you get so you quit you gave up right and, and to me, when you, you don't in this world, you don't fail unless you quit. When you quit, you failed. So yeah. as long as you're not quitting, you're not failing. And right now, there's plenty of resources. You should be reading reading books right now. Uh, you should be watching podcasts like this to 
to get better at what you do. You should be doing role playing with your friends on listing appointments and buyer appointments. And there's not anything. And, I'm, and by the way, I got yelled at the other day on Facebook by a couple of realtors because I said, I one of my friends, one of my realtors posted on Facebook, um, I'm kind of bored today. Should I clean up my garage and do this? And I'm like, no, no, go to work. And so I posted that and I got lambasted by a bunch of people. Oh, um, man. Who saying, you know, this is a really tough time. And I'm a coach. First of all, I'm a coach, right? So what's my what's yeah. a coach supposed to do? Tell you to shut up, sit down, and get, and get to work, right? <laughs> and, and that's my job. But the reality is I'm not telling you not to be with your family right now. I think it's hugely important to be with your family right now. Yeah. Like, the most important thing. But if you can't cap out one hour a day, two hours a day to continue your business, you're going to yeah. be out of business. So yeah. I'm not telling you to do – I mean, I'm working 10-hour days right now. It's ridiculous. But – um, but as far as you, I want you to be with your family. I, I know a lot of you are out there homeschooling your kids. I, I respect that so much. My daughter's doing the same thing with, with our grandkids. Um, I don't, I'm not trying to discount that at all. That's huge. That's most important thing right now. But Kavo, even if you count out 30 minutes and you talk to three or four people a day for 10 mm -hmm. minutes, yeah, I'm not trying to be on the phone all day long. That's not my goal here. Now, if, you, if you're not, if you don't have kids at home, then get on the damn phone. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, but if you don't have kids at home right now, if you have kids at home right now, that's number one. There's nothing more important than that. Yeah. But don't use this as an excuse to say, well, I, I couldn't work because, you know, I couldn't show houses. And and I don't care, you know, uh, The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes, one of my favorite sales books. Yeah. That book. um, you know, uh, he has another thing on a video, uh, uh, Time Management of Billionaires. Great. It's an old, old video on time and it's the best I've ever seen. You know, there's a million things you can do to be better at what you do because I guarantee you that most of you, including myself, I'm awesome at everything. I mean, I'm close, but not everything. Yeah. So, you know, use this time, connect with your friend, your, your, your sphere, connect with your friends and your family. Um, sharpen your skills. Sharpen your skills. Keep your mind sharp. Don't let that go away. Yeah. You become, you become blubber. Who wants to do that? Yeah. Some great advice, my friend, some great advice. So um, my question for you is, and you've kind of already alluded to this, um, but how do you think all this plays out? Like how much longer? And then what happens when this is over? Well, I, I did last night. I actually pulled out my crystal ball. And, uh, yeah. And, yeah, so I know everything now. I actually shook it up, that little black ball. <laughs> so how long is this going to last? Um, I, If I had to say, based on what I'm looking at, I am not a scientist or a doctor or anything like that. I can't guarantee anything. I would be surprised if by the middle of May we're fairly back to normal in real estate, not necessarily the rest of the stuff, sure. but in real estate. Um, I think by the first of June. So my goal is 45, 60 days. Yeah. That's, that's what I've been thinking. Um, starting with the January, the, the April 1st from, you know, we've kind of pretty much all kind of went to lockdown April 1st. So yeah. a little bit earlier, uh, California and stuff like that. I think by June, we're going to be good. This is still going to be, look, this is going to be in effect for years. This yeah. is not going to be like, go away tomorrow. So you need to be adapting now. That's why this is, I'm so adamant about adapting now. Um, but reality, people still have to move. People are still going to buy houses. People are still going to sell houses. Uh, people are still going to rent houses. Uh, that's not going to stop. It can't stop. So it's up to you how you handle it. Uh, one of the things you know we all have learned this years ago. It's not what what happens when you what's the line I'm looking for. So when adversity happens, it's not what you do. It's how you handle it, or it's how you handle it, or something like that. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. This is this is just one of those times. So I really believe in my full heart, in my optimistic view of life, that here's, here's what will change things. And they're working so hard at this right now. We come up with a medical treatment. You, know, you take a couple of pills, and it's not as severe. Yeah. We all get back to normal pretty quickly. Sure. Right? Um, you know, it's going to run its course. So, you know, the few things, and I don't want to get into the whole virus thing, but we don't really know how many people have had this. Yeah. It could be millions. So the numbers that we're looking at that look ridiculously high, and by the way, I'm not discounting death at all. That's horrible. Yeah. yeah. But the numbers that we're looking at could be no different than the regular flu we get every year. Right. We don't know. That's the, that's the big question. So I think we'll know more in um, – and they're talking about the peak being Easter. Yeah. You know, we're starting to see that in New York City right now. We've already seen that in California and Washington. So um, if that's the case, I would say by mid to 
end of May, we're going to be back to fairly normal in the real estate market. Yeah. I think I think restaurants are going to have a whole different issue. I think you're going to start seeing 50% occupancy restaurants, and I don't know how that plays out financially for them because people are still going to be afraid to go next to each other, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's going to be some consequences, for, not for years, but I would say the next six months you're going to see consequences. But I think as far as the real estate business industry, I think I know as soon as we're able to explode, we're going to explode again. Good, good. Yeah, that's I, I, I wholeheartedly believe the same thing. I, I believe right now people are just being overly cautious. Be, and, and, and granted, I mean, uh, the circumstances warrant that. Um, but I, I also believe that when people feel safe about um, going back out, that there is uh, there's going to be a boom. It's going to explode. I really believe that um, because, I mean, even right now in the midst of all this. Uh, and again, we were talking about this before we went live is that when we take a listing and put it on the market, it's still gone within a day or two right now. So imagine releasing all of those buyers who weren't comfortable before back into the market. And now you're going to have sellers who weren't comfortable with people coming through their, their home because, you know, they live there. And I understand that uh, they're going to be they're going to be uh, uh, excited about getting their home on the market and getting it sold. So I I, I, I wholeheartedly believe uh, we will. We we've seen a little bit of a lull, but we may more than actually make it up come June, July, August. Um, and and I wholeheartedly believe that that's what'll happen. So um, and, and part of that is wishful thinking, obviously, because I'm in the real estate industry. But I mean, I truly believe that. I really do. Yeah, yeah, I, I do too. And you got to remember, unlike the mid 2000s, this is not a economic housing crisis. This is a virus that caused everybody to get. To have to stay home. Yeah. So I don't think, I, I mean, I think uh, it's kind of our economy's on pause. Yeah. I, I mean, we have literally, I mean, it's been the best economy I, I think I've seen in my lifetime. Yeah, for sure. You know, I don't think I've seen anything better. I mean, I, I was trying to look back like during the uh, 80s uh, when I had my paintball business, it was crazy. The economy was awesome, but I don't think it was as good as what we have right now. Yep. yep. And, and so I don't see a couple of months, a two or three month, layoff per se killing our economy now we get into six months nine months we're in unprecedented we're unprecedented right now we don't know yeah. so everything we need is just speculation but i'm an optimist i'm going to believe that we're going to be back back in business in the next 45 days or so and uh and rocking and and i think like you said this like i can tell you right now like in florida here i have we have a lot of 55 plus communities right yeah. i have a, i have one of my list most of my listings are selling my one of my 50 Five plus communities not getting a showing yet. Wow! Now, but think about it. It's the most. It's the people that are the most likely to to get in trouble with the virus. The people right. that live there, and the people that are going to look at those homes, they're less likely to be looking. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I think that's a factor of what we do. I have a meeting right after this with with my sellers on that to have that discussion because they're kind of freaking out because they want the house sold. Sure. Sure. I get it. Man. We can't control. We can't control that. One thing I, I've learned years and years and years ago, I never, ever, ever, ever get upset about things I can't control. I just figure out how to adapt. Yeah. You are a stoic, my friend. You are a, you would make Marcus Aurelius proud. <laughs> uh, yeah, but <laughs> no, but I, I, I always enjoy about I lost you there for a second. Yeah. Just wanted to see if there was anything else you wanted to add before we jump off. Um, not really. I think we covered. It. I just if there's anything you got out of this conversation is don't don't not work. Yeah. Don't, don't work. work and make per continue to make personal connections right now. People yeah. need that. Those are the big takeaways, I think. Yeah, everybody is 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 the desire right now is to talk to somebody. Yep. Yeah, and and, and don't ask them about their property. <laughs> don't yeah. don't be that person. Just ask them how they're doing. Pretty simple. No, nope. great advice, my friend. I could literally talk to you for another hour. Um, as usual, I love sharing these stories week after week because I know this show is literally changing agents' financial lives, my own included. Hey, guys, do me a big favor. If you know someone that might enjoy the podcast, please share it with them. And if you like the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe. If you want to jump on a call 30 minutes with myself for free to talk business, go to meetmikewall.com. Mitch, where can people connect with you, my friend? Um, well, obviously, you know, Facebook and stuff. My, I'll give you my direct line. Just call me. Uh, and I will tell you, I don't answer my phone ever. So call me and leave a message and I'll call you back. 
Um, that's totally anti-realtor, right? But I get so many junk phone calls every day. Uh, 321-258-4150. Um, and again, my name's there. I'm on Facebook. Uh, just reach out, Mitch at MitchRealty.com. Real easy email address to remember. Uh, if you need help, you want guidance, I'm here. That's what I do. All right, Mitch, man. We'll put a bow on this one. Thank you so much again, man. It's always a pleasure. All right. Thanks, Mike. Have a good one, baby. Take care.